Hi travellers and welcome to this week's edition on the best things to do in Brisbane. I'm Chris and I've been a local to Brisbane for over 20 years so in turn I have the most comprehensive list to share with you today from the CBD to the greater Brisbane area. So let's get started. We'll start off today in the bustling suburb of South Bank just across from the city. It covers 17 hectares of land on the riverfront and features free swimming facilities, walking tracks, licensed picnic areas and also home to a year-round calendar of events. Little Stanley Street is bursting with more than 30 cafes, bars and restaurants offering an array of cuisines. Along with Grey Street is a foodie haven which offers you plenty of places to eat and just incredible for a romantic dinner for two. Join this with a casual nightly stroll along the streets with lights, markets and shopping. Streets Beach is a must do when you're exploring the parklands and a nice way for your group to relax. It's Australia's only inner city man-made beach which boasts a sparkling blue lagoon surrounded by white sandy beaches and subtropical plants. Nearby there's also a pool and a kids activity centre. Streets Beach is an oasis within walking distance from Brisbane City and open from early morning until late at night. Are you searching for that one Instagram worthy photo that screams I was in Brisbane? Look no further than the iconic Brisbane sign located in South Brisbane. With stunning panoramic views of the skyline in the background, it's no wonder this spot has become a must visit. What's even more fascinating is the story behind the sign. Initially installed in 2014 for the G20 summit, the sign was only meant to be temporary. However, due to its popularity and overwhelming love from the community, it was replaced with better materials and made a permanent fixture. The Sedgeway tours cruise around South Brisbane in a different way and a lot quicker than walking. After some training and getting used to the machine, you set forth onto the streets. Roll along the river walk through South Brisbane, South Bank and over the Goodwill Bridge into the Botanic Gardens. There isn't much commentary along the way, but you'll see a lot more city sites in a shorter period of time. The Wheel of Brisbane is located at South Bank and walking distance from Brisbane City. Conveniently, it's open from roughly 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. It's about 60 metres high and was constructed in 2008 as a 20th anniversary of the World Expo in 1988. An adult ticket will cost you roughly $20, but there are different packages for VIP treatments and romantic champagne date night ideas. If you are like me and were around Brisbane for the World Expo in 1988, then you might remember the Nepalese Peace Pagoda. The Nepalese people brought it to Australia as their contribution to the Expo, and it's the only structure that's still standing today from the event. It's a three-storey high structure, a beautiful treasure in the heart of South Bank, made of 80 tonnes of Nepalese timber and took two years to build. Brisbane is very lucky to have this addition being one of the only three Nepalese pagodas outside of Nepal. Browse the intricate design and wander through the bottom floor to marvel at the work that went into it. Stroll around and admire the man-made lush forest right in the heart of South Bank. Above all, this is the perfect place to get away from the hustle and bustle located right next to the Nepalese pagoda. There is a huge array of tropical and subtropical plants and don't forget to be on the lookout for wildlife. There's also a water feature running through as well as seating and boardwalks to help get you around. The Goodwill footbridge connects Brisbane City near the Botanic Gardens to South Bank near the Maritime Museum. It was built in 2001 and named after the Goodwill Games which was held in the same year. You can marvel at the architecture and either walk, cycle or skate the 500 metres across. Either way, join the 40,000 people each week who use this as an access point to get from Brisbane to South Bank or vice versa. 
A slightly different construction, the Karulpa Bridge is a very different design and located opposite end of South Bank as the Goodwill. The bridge was opened in 2009 and known to be the world's largest hybrid Tenskredi bridge, which produces a synergy between balance tension and compression components to create a light structure which is incredibly strong. At any rate, it's only a short walk at 470 metres long, with two large viewing platforms and a full length canopy. You might like to consider using it as a loop with both sides of the river with the Goodwill Bridge. The Neuron Scooters are the newest way to get around Brisbane City and they're located all over. They can range in price from $8 per day on a three day pass, but cheaper depending what kind of package you're after. The company was founded in Singapore and now one of the most leading e-scooter developers with more options around Australia. The three-day collective South Bank markets are normally held over a long weekend from Friday to Sunday and go into the evenings. Anyone with locally made or sourced products can apply for a stall here and there is so much variety to choose from. Wander through the streets day or night and see what the locals of Brisbane have to offer from food, trending fashion, arts and crafts, collectibles, jewellery and home decor. The Grand Arbor Walk is a curling steel column covered in brilliant pink bougainvillea plants. This is what marks the walkway from Vulture Street to the museum. It was officially opened in 2000, roughly one kilometre long and constructed of 443 steel tendrils. Special events in the evenings have them covered in lights, lanterns and different things associated to the event. Therefore, it could be a very different scene when you arrive in Brisbane. This South Brisbane area is bursting with cultural experiences. This includes the Queensland Museum, the Gallery of Modern Art, the Art Gallery, and the Library. This is all packed into the cultural precinct and is mostly free to visit. With travelling displays and new artists coming through all the time, I think I've seen something new every time I've visited. While the City Cat is Brisbane public transport, it is still a way to tour the city from the water. It generally runs throughout the day from North Shore Hamilton all the way to Southside to UQ St Lucia. Even better that you can use this for a romantic nightly cruise along the river to see the Brisbane City lights. This will stop both sides of the river depending on where you would like to go or just take a ride through the city and back. You can even find the smaller kitty cat and ride for free. I'll link a video below about getting around Brisbane on public transport for more information. An estimated 20 minutes drive from Brisbane City, you have Mount Coother that'll give you the best overall views of Brisbane. And on a clear day, you can also see the ocean and the golden sunshine coasts. It's best in the morning watching a sunrise or at night with the city lights. Although you'll find plenty of people up there during the day. There is a cafe and restaurant for those wanting a quick coffee, ice cream or a meal and plenty of parking right near the lookout. The JC Slaughter Falls track would have to be one of my favourite hiking trails in Brisbane. It begins at the picnic area and finishes at the stunning Mount Coother lookout we mentioned just before. This walk is just over two kilometres and will take around 40 to 50 minutes one way. With its easy path, everyone from young to young at heart can enjoy the journey and feel secure knowing that the track is well maintained and formed ensuring your safety every step of the way. As a local, I've used it hundreds of times to start off my morning and get my heart racing with the elevation. Next, you can check out the Mount Coother Botanic Gardens if you're looking for a tranquil escape. While you can visit at any time of the day for free, Special events can be held throughout the year to spark more interest. You can wander through the different displays like the Japanese Garden, South Africa, or maybe even the bonsais. Either way, you have tourist information centre there for the maps, 
and anything else you need to know, and a cafe if you actually get hungry. Whether you're a lifelong astronomer or a curious newbie looking to explore the cosmos, the planetarium offers a wealth of entertainment and learning opportunities sure to leave a lasting impression. The planetarium's cosmic sky dome has a variety of shows and you can witness the wonder of the universe from the comfort of your seat. Explore the cosmos like never before, from the origins of the universe to the black holes and beyond. But that's not all, you can also admire the amazing artifacts, including fragments of asteroids that are billions of years old, spacecraft models, and even the faithful replica of Neil Armstrong's lunar spacesuit. There are a number of reasons locals or tourists visit Kangaroo Point. A popular recreational spot, locals for exercise, family picnics, or a lookout point. The cliffs were formed after stone was quarried from the site and used in construction of a number of local structures. The Kangaroo Point cliffs also feature excellent abseiling possibilities. The cliff face is lit up at night by numerous floodlights, as well as being a stunning viewpoint of the Brisbane City Riverside section. The large gateway bridge has a five kilometre return walk with available shelters, chairs and water station. Access to the walk can happen from either the northern side on Laverick Avenue or the southern side at the Queensport Rocks Park. In summer, it's highly exposed and best done in the early morning and late afternoon, but also note that it's used by walkers and cyclists. The River Walk is a nice place for a romantic stroll or getting some exercise with the kids. It runs from New Farm Park to the edge of the Brisbane River and offers stunning waterfront views. Generally, it's a lovely way to tour the city and a brilliant lookout point for the Story Bridge. It also connects with other walking areas and will lead you all the way into the city. The City Hall building in Brisbane is an integral part of the city's history and architecture. Adjacent to the King George Square, the grand building boasts sweeping marble staircases, vaulted ceilings, chandeliers, and a mosaic tiled floor. It's open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily and guided tours showcase the main auditorium, Father Henry Willis Organ, and the iconic clock tower. Speaking about the clock tower, it includes a ride in a beautiful old hand-operated lift and a bird's eye view of the city. While the tickets for the clock tower are free, it is handy to book online beforehand. They run every 15 minutes between 10.30 and 4.30 but it could be a couple of hours wait if you don't book. Only a 10 minute walk from Brisbane CBD lies the Roma Street Parkland. It offers designer gardens and sprawling lawns that wind around the 16 hectares of stunning parklands. Well known by garden and plant enthusiasts, it also has free barbecues, playgrounds, and a year round calendar of events like the Enchanted Gardens. The Enchanted Gardens are actually held just before Christmas and the gardens are transformed into a series of light displays you can wander through. Tickets for this will need to be booked in advance. For many people wanting to get their venture on, you can climb the Story Bridge with many options to get your adrenaline pumping. This can happen throughout the day or a sunset or nighttime visits. While you might not get the highest views on the climb, it does allow you to see the structure's mechanics up close. The Story Bridge is a heritage-listed steel cantilever bridge spanning the Brisbane River that carries vehicular, bicycle and pedestrian traffic between the north and the southern suburbs. While there is a cost for booking the Story Bridge adventure climb, using the bridge walkways is one of my best free things to do in Brisbane. Essentially, the bridge was built in 1935, stands 74 metres tall and connects Fortitude Valley to Kangaroo Point. It's the longest cantilever bridge in Australia 
and carries an average of 97,000 vehicles every day. There's also three lanes in traffic in every direction, as well as a shared pedestrian and cycleway flanking each side. Check out Brisbane City and the major shopping and entertainment district. Find all your popular brands, favourite cafes, or a central spot to catch up with friends or family. I find the Queen Street Mall very busy during the week with Monday to Friday workers, However, weekends are solely for tourists visiting the city and locals catching up. There are fewer people around and easier to shop and find what you're looking for. Did you know you can actually walk to an island from Brisbane? Well, you can do just that from Wellington Point to King Island. This is a local favourite and most people use it as a way to exercise, walk the dog or meet up with the family. The King Island Walk is only very short, about one kilometre, and you need to ensure that it's done sometime around low tide. I'll link a video below in the description for more information. A night out at Eat Street Markets is a great way to spend some quality time with family or friends. With music and entertainment provided by buskers and local musicians, you can stroll through the different stalls sampling a variety of cuisines from around the world. Whether you're in the mood for Indian, Italian, Chinese or Thai, there's sure to be something to tantalise your taste buds. And with over 60 food vendors to choose from, you will be spoiled for choice. The Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary is an excellent place to see some of Australia's iconic animals up close. With plenty of koalas, as well as kangaroos, wallabies, echidnas and reptiles. Visitors can even hold a koala or feed a kangaroo. The sanctuary also offers daily presentations on their local wildlife, as well as a live free flight bird display. It's located very close to Brisbane City and you can choose to drive there or catch the Miramar Ferry from Southbank at 10 a.m. every morning. Exploring the Brisbane River from a ferry might be good enough for you, but paddling on a kayak could be even better. I've done the Sunset Kayaking Tour a couple of times over the years, and it can be pretty fun while getting some exercise in. The tour only goes for a couple of hours, and you're taken by the guide a few hundred metres up and down the river. However, this all happens while ferries and other boats are gliding by, so expect a few waves. In the end, the unrestricted city skyline at night is phenomenal from this angle and well worth the experience. The Inaugura Reservoir is one spot to swim that I never knew existed until a couple of years ago. Everyone can enjoy this area from swimmers to kayakers, paddleboarders, or just floating in a donut. The space for swimming is sectioned off and everyone with a device is outside of that. The cool thing is I even saw a hire van down there to rent kayaks and paddle boards by the hour if you don't want to take your own. Although if you want some added entertainment, there seems to be a number of hikes and bike trails around, as well as toilets and a cafe located near the car park. Hidden away on the edge of the city lies a little park nestled between the stark rocky cliffs and the iconic Story Bridge. This secret park is a haven for locals seeking a tranquil retreat from the urban bustle or for those simply passing through on foot. Despite its autonomy, this little oasis rewards intrepid explorers with one of the most stunning views of the Story Bridge and the river below. But more so just as a photographer, especially at night. Or for the yearly River Fire Festival in September. Come and experience the adventure of playing mini golf and there are a few different courses around Brisbane. But this one featured today was called Golf Central near the DFO at the airport. I found most of them relatively easy to follow. I guess it just comes down to your skill level, which I'm a bit average. There are some cute designs though and different holes and some harder than the others to keep the challenge going. 
If you have a big group, it can be a whole lot of fun and take some time getting through the 18 holes. Something Brisbane doesn't have a shortage of is different breweries. Experience the finest craft and chilled atmosphere, along with a casual lunch or dinner of burgers or local food truck vans. I'm partial to the ginger beer range, but Matt and I sampled a few of the others in the past. The Wynnum Wading Pool is worth visiting and has been enjoyed by locals since 1932. It's a huge 128 metre long and 54 metre wide area and fairly shallow with less than a metre in depth in the centre. At high tide, three pipes allow water to come through from the beach and the floodgates stop from the water receding. There's also mesh covering on the pipes to stop marine life entering and the bottom is covered in clay and sand. Axe throwing isn't your typical date spot, but it's definitely unique and exciting experience that you won't forget anytime soon. With 19 fully closed lanes, you'll have plenty of space to channel your inner lumberjack and throw some axes. And don't worry if you're not a pro, their friendly and knowledgeable staff will teach you all the necessary skills to hit that bullseye. After a quick safety briefing, you have about an hour of fun and games set by the staff. But it's not just for dates and it's perfect for corporate team events as well. So release your inner anger and up your skills in combat. Either way, it's a whole lot of fun. The Loris Bonnie River Walk has been around for some time, but has recently been upgraded with wider paths and more stopping canopies. It follows Kingsford Smith Drive from Brett's Ferry Terminal to the Breakfast Creek Hotel. The entire walk has views of the Brisbane River, but know that it can get a little noisy with the major road. If you didn't get enough of Streets Beach and you're in Greater Brisbane on the north side, you might opt for a relaxing day swimming at Redcliffe's Settlement Cove Lagoon. It's a community swimming and wading pool with picnic areas, shelters, barbecues, toilet facilities and showers. There's also a boardwalk along the beach right past a number of restaurants and places to eat. Nothing beats having fun in the great outdoors as well as having some free places to take the kids. Speaking of boardwalks, you can walk along the Redcliffe Peninsula from Scarborough past Woody Point, which I think is over 10 kilometres. You can use this to start your day off by watching the sunrise, travelling by foot or by bike, and you can even bring the family pet. The track is fairly flat the whole way, making perfect for the kids who might not be too confident on their bikes yet. Plus there are entry and exit points along the way so it's easy to join and exit the trail wherever you like. So after everything mentioned today, what else are you supposed to do? Well, you can always click here and find out the best day trips from Brisbane and get yourself further out of the city. Apart from that, thanks a bunch for watching and I will see you for the next one.